What's up you guys, Gong Rong Zong here. So Tidal Basin is coming out in just a few days. And with that in mind, I wanted to showcase to you guys what the end game, the end game version of what the sharpshooter gun build that I've already done a whole complete in that video on, what this looks like at its peak. Now I'm doing this because I realized that while most guides are very good at showcasing you the theory aspect of it, of what gear to get, what attributes to get, what weapons to get, what talents to get, most guides unfortunately don't show you the practical applications of their build. While the build may work in the training room against static dummies, that is no indication of whether the build can deal with any and all situations, especially in a solo context out there in the real world. So I thought of doing a complete walkthrough and commentary of me handling one of the hardest forms of content in the game currently, a level 4 control point. So this is not just to prove that this build works in the real world, but perhaps to provide you guys with some essential tips and tricks and strategies on how you might be able to conquer these areas on the harder difficulties. In my point of view, seeing what we know already about the gear sets that are coming out, it is extremely unlikely that this build will change next week when World Tale 5 comes out. The fundamentals are all there of doing an extreme amount of damage in this sharpshooter build. A glass cannon build, so to speak, or as another phrase that I like to use, the one-shot headshot sharpshooter build. I've already put up some clips of what gear I am using, but I don't want to make this video too lengthy. So if you want a really in-depth guide where I explain all my reasoning behind the weapon mods, the talents, and the gear sets, make sure you check out my complete sharpshooter guide which I did about a week ago. Trust me, you won't regret it. It's such a good build. Alright, so this is the haunted house capture point that I am coming to. Uh, it's dark as heck, it's at night. And you can see here, as I approach the control point, I chose this control point at random, I don't actually know the layout. I'm trying to scout out a very good position where I can start my engagement. As a sharpshooter specialization, especially when you're using a marksman rifle, positioning is everything. So right now I'm looking around the area thinking about, hey, where can I, oh, that zonal thing is really bugging out. Thinking about where I can position myself to be in a good defensive and offensive position, where there will be the least amount of flanks coming in. Uh, right here I spot a patrol and I know straight away that that is not something I want to engage together with the control point. Very often you will meet many patrols walking in and out of a control point and you know a lot of times you're unlucky, you get unlucky and a patrol happens to come upon you when you're attacking a control point. In fact I'll probably say it's not unlucky, it happens very very often and it's something you have to be prepared for. But if you can mitigate it, if you can mitigate it I would say just spend the extra 30 seconds to a minute waiting it out. At this point I'm still scouting around and I'm kind of looking behind, ooh there's a loot box there, where can I fall back to? If I take up that forward position in this small little platform of a sorts, where can I fall back to? There is a little bit of space for me to fall back to, so it's still good. Okay, so at this point I'm just still waiting for the patrol to pass, and then I'm scouting out a little bit more. I can hide behind this desk, I can hide behind that set of couches over there. Are they couches or are they cubes or something? Anyway, yeah, so I'm waiting for the patrol to pass. So again, at this point, I just want to emphasize again, while it may take a while, patience is key. You are taking on one of the hardest, if not the hardest open world content in The Division 2. You don't want to screw this up and have to do it all over again. So at this point, I'm just testing the couches again, looking at the map again to see, are there any patrols coming out? That's the reason why I keep opening my map. Sometimes elite patrols would even spawn. If you've seen those before, they are plus two elite patrols. You definitely don't want to engage that together with a level four control point. Yet another patrol has spawned. Looks like these guys are going to get some water. I don't want to engage a control point with these guys out there. So even though it takes a while for me to get into the action, don't be impatient. Wait it out. Wait for the extra patrols to disappear before you engage the control point. Okay, at this point I'm considering, should I start the engagement at this lower barrier or should I do it at the platform that I just mentioned? I'm scouting out the car, I'm looking out, oh, the enemy will be able to shoot me at that angle through that platform if I take that position. I have to be very aware of the angle at which flanks come in and the angle at which they can shoot me at. I think at this point I'm trying to look around the bench, yep, another point of cover for me right here. And I'm trying to see, can I engage them from this small little bench that's providing me with minimal cover? At this point also, I'm marking out targets. Remember that you can mark out targets and they will help you a lot, especially when you're playing this solo. 
I think in the end, I'm very much certain that I go up to the platform. Yes, I choose the platform in the end because that small little barrier just didn't feel right to me. It didn't do it for me, even though this platform is a little bit open. Alright, so it looks like I'm preparing to take the first shot here. Yes, I do. The best thing about this glass cannon shot through the build is that even with your normal Model 700 marksman rifle, you can immediately take out one threat. I tried to take this guy out of my, with my sniper rifle for a lucky headshot, I missed. So I opt to go for my rifle. At this kind of close range encounters, your rifle will be most important. There's a guy on my left here, I immediately take him out. Immediately it gets very hectic. I know a lot of people are complaining about the close range encounters and how all these yellow elites start to swarm you. But I think that is what makes the game so exciting. The fact that you have to constantly look out for flanks, and when you're in so doing such a build like mine, such a high percentage of damage to elites, it's no problem even though yellow start to swarm you, right? You saw how fast I was able to take down that yellow. The thing that I had to be aware of when doing this is I had to be aware. Again, positioning is key. Right here, a patrol comes out. I'm still in a good enough position to be able to block damage from my front. I'm not too worried about that. But I want to make sure that I left that platform and I engage this patrol from the, from over here, the lower barrier. Why? Because this platform makes you, while this platform is good for engagements, it makes you very vulnerable to flanks. All right, the guy is throwing a grenade at me. So immediately I move back to the platform, my, my main form of cover. This guy right here is trying to flank me and I make the decision immediately to leave the platform. Immediately to leave the platform. Luckily, he goes on to engage the friendlies over there. But if he had come to engage me, I would be in a better position behind this block of concrete to engage him. Right now, I'm just killing him through this um, through this barrier, which was really cool. Alright, so there are people pelting bullets at me. Uh, I screw up this healing cam launcher thing. I'm very prone to screwing it up with the double tap of the E. And now I'm just waiting out, right? I'm waiting it out. The majority of the yellows of the first wave have gone down, and I opt to switch to my marksman rifle. There's enough space. There is enough space between me and the enemy for, it, for me to be able to switch out to my marksman rifle and fire away some headshots. This is something also that you guys should practice when to use your marksman rifle and when to use your rifle. It's crucial to know which weapon you should use at which situation. As a rule of thumb, anything close to moderate range, use your rifle. Anything far range like this, use your marksman rifle to take targets out quickly and swiftly. At this point, I'm opting to use the drone because while it has a very long cooldown, I'm not too worried about the defending phase. During the defending phase, I will be able to know generally where the enemy is coming from. At this point, I'm missing all my rifle shots and I have zero bullets left in the magazine of my marksman rifle. And so immediately, I, I opt to swap out to my rifle because all the enemies right now are out of cover. And it gave me a perfect opportunity to quickly take down these two yellows, as you guys see here. Oh, there's a yellow sorbet car over there. I opt to take that out immediately, right? The worst thing that you can experience as a sharpshooter is these mobs throwing grenades at you or throwing uh, RC cars at you, getting you out of cover very quickly. Cover is your main friend as a sharpshooter. Here, this guy's running in. I throw a flashbang just to cover myself, but I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried because I saw that there's only one yellow rushing me in this game mob. As you can see here, the only mob remaining is that purple mob, so I am not too worried. So when you build a build like this, a glass cannon build, you do have enough damage to take down yellows and lame mobs very, very swiftly and very, very quickly. So it may be a build that you guys want to consider if you're having trouble with yellows rushing you. Okay, at this point, I call in the reinforcements. You don't always need to do that. You can wait a while until you take a defensive position to call in reinforcements. But I wanted to make this as realistic as possible because if I still had friendlies alive, the counter force would come in straight away. So I opt to go to this little brick um, wall, as you want to call it, this halfway brick wall, and here I'm using my marksman rifle. I, I land a body shot, and this is something I want to talk about for marksman rifles. Don't be too obsessed over headshots. Yes, try your best to land headshots, but okay, he's throwing a grenade at me here, immediately I get out. If yellow mobs are throwing grenades at you, get out. You will not be able to tolerate the amount of damage that they do. But yes, I was talking about marksman rifles. Don't be afraid to land body shots. With this build, they still do they still do about 40k damage, and that's a lot of damage to a mob. Okay, right here it gets a little bit hairy because I'm surrounded on both sides. But at least this little bit of concrete is able to give me enough of a barrier. At that point of time you saw that I was blind firing. Don't ever discount blind firing. The accuracy of blind firing, especially with a rifle, is surprisingly accurate. I have tested it out in a video before, but just take my word for it. If not, try to test it out for yourself. Blind firing is pretty accurate on a rifle and is one of your best friends as a sharpshooter specialization. So right now, right now I know another wave is coming in. My friendlies are not in yet or they're very close to coming in. 
Oh, they're over there. They're just 50 meters away. So I go over there to check it out. Because I think they're in conflict with some of the enemies. And I think I was right. But at this point, I think I felt like I was very much out of cover. This is a very vulnerable forward position for me to take. And I believe I will be falling back pretty quickly after this. But at this point, I'm still pretty safe because the friendlies are up. Okay, I'm beginning to take some fire here. I try to get this guy, I do. And this is where your marksman rifle shines. While you main, while it doesn't have very high uptime, right? Maybe it only has 20 to 30% uptime in, an, in a solo engagement such as this. It is crucial. It is crucial because it's able to take out one or two targets instantly, just like that. And there's very little that they can do to prevent that. Okay, so at this point, again, I use my marksman rifle. This guy's probably gonna go down, yep, very quickly. So immediately in that attacking wave, I've already taken out two yellows very swiftly, very quickly, and I've lost minimal health while doing so. Three yellows, in fact. Three yellows of this singular phase went down to a marksman rifle. I am in no danger right now, right? There is nobody flanking me. Suicide bomber coming over here. Take him out with another marksman shot. This guy gets another headshot in the face. Two headshots in the face, right? This bolt action rifle is just, it's just so amazing. This model 700 is so amazing. I did not even see that grenade that came behind me. Um, that guy is on fire. I don't know how he got on fire. Um, yeah, see, I land a body shot here. But the body shot of the marksman rifle again is powerful enough to do a considerable amount of damage and powerful enough to make the enemy stagger. Most of the time, they will stagger from a body shot. So it's something that you want to... How about this way? It's something that you don't want to punish yourself too much over if you land a body shot with the model 700. At this point, I'm opting to go back to my rifle. That's a lot of mobs down there. Two or three of them that I can see. And the name the mob is coming in. Your rifle is a very, very powerful weapon that you can use at close range. This flame name mob, immediately she goes down after the initial armor damage that I did to her. There's another guy there trying to run away. And I hit him with a headshot to the back, which is really, really cool. But yes, this is how you conquer a capture, a control point level 4 with the sharpshooter specialization, with this glass cannon build, something that I like to term the one-shot headshot, or you can call it the glass cannon build if you want. I think it's a very, very viable build for solo play. As you can see here, I am soloing this entire control point on my own. I've soloed other level 4 control points with it with no hassle. i soloed the challenging stronghold of Roosevelt Island, the hardest one to date, with this build. So for those of you guys that are having trouble out there dealing with the yellow AI and how they're very aggressive and how they have too much hit points and how they keep rushing at you, this build may be something that you want to consider because as I have shown you here, it's able to do very well in solo play. It's able to deal very well with any sort of engagements. There were very long range engagements in this encounter and there were a few short range encounter moments. In fact, I would say quite a few actually because of the aggressive nature of the yellow mobs AI, but I was still able to deal with them quite fine. They were simply not able to stand up to the sheer amount of damage that this build is able to put out. So just to recap, what are the strengths of this build? An insane amount of damage at any range, as you guys can see here. A marksman rifle, one headshot is usually enough to take down a yellow, if not one headshot and one body shot and it goes down. For the rifle, 10 or bullets or so or under 10 bullets will be able to take out a yellow mob comfortably. But what are the weaknesses of this build? The main weakness of this build, and if there's one thing I want you guys to take away from this entire experience is this, the weaknesses of this build is getting flanked. And so positioning, 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 positioning is extremely important. You are a sharpshooter. Everything about your specialization is about positioning. When you get flanked, the chance of you being dead, especially when you get flanked by yellows, is exponentially high. But there were a few situations where I did get flanked in this fight and I was still able to recover from it pretty well. Why? One simple reason. I was very aware of my surroundings. I knew where the enemies were coming from. I knew they were coming from this pathway and this pathway. I knew how to anticipate them coming. The enemy did perform a lot of flanks in this encounter, but none of them were surprising. None of them surprised me. I knew they were going to come from this side and this side when I was attacking the capture point. I knew they were going to climb up this wall and they were going to climb up this platform when I was defending the control point. Most of the deaths in this game are attributed not to flanks, but to flanks that you are unaware of. 
all the enemy needs is for you to be unaware that he or she is at your side or behind you for 1 second, 1.5 seconds, 2 seconds. That's all they need to take you down. But if you're able to cut away this element of surprise, if you already have your close range weapon swapped out in anticipation of them coming, like how you see in this encounter, I am already going to get my rifle swapped out or I already have it swapped out in anticipation of them coming, there is very little that they can do in the face of the sheer amount of damage that you can put out. I love this build very 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 much. I've barely played the survivalist or the demolitionist because of this reason that I just love this build so much. And while I would love to create new demolitionist and survivalist guides for you guys, I just haven't gotten down to doing it because this build is just so fun. So I would encourage you guys to give it a try and see what you think of it. I will most definitely be going into World Tier 5, Tidal Basin, and the raids with this build. And I'm very excited to share with you guys even more amazing footage of what this build is able to achieve in solo play and in group play. I've been using the exact same build in group play and it's been working out phenomenally. Nothing about this build needs to change from solo to group play and that is yet another beauty of it. So make sure you check out my complete sharpshooter guide build video thingy if you haven't done it yet. It goes very in-depth into everything, the weapon talents, the gear talents, the weapon mods, the attribute, how you should split up your attributes, and so on and so forth. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in DC.